This episode of Out of Spec Reviews is brought to you by Magna. More on that later. Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video and welcome to Northern Colorado where we always perform our efficiency loops. This is our MPG testing loop. This is our range test testing loop. And well, you can see behind me, we have the Rivian R1T and the F-150 Lightning. And in this video, we're gonna find out which one's more efficient on a drive. So you join me on this literally perfect night outside. I don't know if you can just tell the lighting conditions are beautiful right now. It'll probably be dark by the time we hit the road, but no wind, almost like no weather outside. Just can't even feel anything. The temperature is just perfect. And we have two very similarly spec'd trucks. Now, a lot of people will say, hey, the F-150 and the Rivian don't compete, they're different. And you're right. However, they're the only two electric trucks you can buy on the market. The Hummer EV is the third, but that's more lifestyle truck. I think the Silverado EV would be a better comparison. The Hummer EV, I think, um, is more just as a, I don't know, silly device. I think it's awesome in all the wrong ways, but I love it. So I think these two are the two trucks we keep hearing you guys ask about, we keep getting questions about, and to be quite honest, it's the two trucks we have. So we're gonna see which is more efficient. The F-150 Lightning is really just a normal F-150, right? They just put a battery pack in it. So everyone knows kind of what this is. This is the least efficient F-150 Lightning you can buy. And that is because it has the big battery, so you're hauling around more weight, and it's the Platinum, which means you get these 22s, massaging seats, glass roof, like it's got everything. And what's interesting about the Rivian is it also has the 22 wheels. In fact, they're the identical wheel and tire size between both trucks, or at least tire size is identical. So um, it's gonna be quite a, a, a apples to apples comparison, even to the point where we're gonna leave the tonneau cover open on the Rivian just to simulate, okay, that and that. Now, if you step back and kind of stand square on, no question the Rivian is a smaller truck. And we all know based off of our testing that the size does affect efficiency. Aero plays way more of a role than weight here. So my prediction, to be totally honest, I don't know, we've never run these two side by side, is this is gonna be slightly more efficient, but by how much, I don't know it's still possible Ford could have worked magic on the F-150 and this might be more efficient. We just don't know until we try it. So we're gonna run our 57 and a half mile loop from here in Wellington, Colorado, up to Cheyenne, Wyoming, turn around and come back at 70 miles an hour. We always do our testing at 70. It's just a nice compromise of a speed. You can generally drive anywhere in the country. And then, you know, if you drive a little bit faster, you know to expect less. If you drive a little slower, you know to expect a little bit more. Um, in terms of pricing on each truck, this is 94 grand. And that Rivian, if you spec it out today, is 91 grand. They're pretty much the same price. And we'll have more in-depth comparisons about acceleration, driving dynamics, towing capabilities, hauling capabilities. But just to give you my initial impressions, because I've been in and out of both trucks all week, this is the utility truck to do work with. And I'm not sure for me personally, I would go for a platinum spec. I know I keep saying that. I feel like this is genuinely do what you need to do with a truck with this thing and beat it up and just, you know, use it as a tool. And no question, this has all the truck in the world you could ever want. It is wonderful. And obviously, you know my thoughts on the Rivian. I've already reviewed this truck many times and I loved it so much I bought one and this one's mine. And uh, the reason I still think I made the right decision for myself was I can knife through traffic in this thing, haul up canyons and go off-roading all better than the F-150 can. This serves a purpose where I still probably could have used this truck. If the Rivian didn't exist, this is probably what I would be driving right now. Um, but I just didn't need all of the, the uh, payload capacity all of, uh, in terms of sizing. I didn't need the big bed that the Lightning has. And this can actually tow more than this truck. And towing tests are coming, but we have to run them side by side, unladen, totally stripped down. And, and I guess to get even a little bit nerdier to go pretty quickly, we're charging both trucks DC fast charging. They've literally driven the exact same roads. They've done everything for the last number of, number of hours. So we've given their thermal systems a chance to sort of equalize to where they wanna be. We're charging them each to 70% state of charge and then unplugging them and then running the loop. So 
There you go, that's how we're doing the test. Maybe I'll hit you with a couple more nerdy details first before we go, as we get closer to a 70% charge. I genuinely don't know what to think here. So how are we gonna calculate the efficiency differences? Because you know maybe for most people, just reading what it says on the dash would be good, but that's not good enough for us. I want our testing to be more accurate than anyone else in the business. And what we really should be doing, which we're not, is to only measure the amount of energy that comes out of the battery pack while we're moving. And that would either be for climate control usage, because that's a part of efficiency, and it would also be for how much power is going to the motors to drive the vehicle. What we really should do is put some current clamps on the battery pack vo high voltage connections and see how much energy is flown in and out throughout the drive. We don't have current clamps yet. Everything's kind of on order. So we're gonna be doing the real nerdy stuff soon. Um, so there's two ways we can calculate efficiency. First off, we are going to reference the in-cabin uh, you know, miles per kilowatt hour display just to get you an idea of where the truck thinks it came in. What we're also going to do is come back here and charge the vehicles back to 70% state of charge and factor in the charging losses to that. So you'll get an idea of what the truck uses on its own and you'll also get an idea of the charging losses throughout because that's ultimately, I think, what a lot of people care about when it comes to efficiency is not only how much efficiency does the truck use, but how much efficiency is it or how good is the efficiency of the DC fast charging system. This is a pretty low voltage system. This thing's about 350 volt nominal. The Rivian is close to 100 volts more nominal, about 80, I would say. And, and that just means that the Rivian, in theory, needs to flow less current, which means less heat loss because I've instilled in you guys, hopefully by now, I squared R. So for the more current you need, the, 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 the uh, heat loss goes up on a logarithmic curve. And so the Rivian's smaller, a higher voltage system, which should in theory be slightly more efficient, but it has four motors. This only has two. That's actually probably better for efficiency, uh, just depending on how, how it's managed. I don't really know. There's no perfect way to compare the efficiency is side by side because both trucks are different. Both trucks may read slightly different values, but I think we're gonna get close enough is what I'm trying to tell you. It's not scientific testing, it's real world testing to the best of our ability. So we'll unplug the trucks when we get to 70%. Jordan, you wanna hop in the Rivian? I'll take the Lightning. Yep. Okay, so I can't wait to see how these things do. So let's talk battery pack capacities. The F-150 Lightning, as stated by Ford, is 131 kilowatt hours usable. We've been able to pull about 128 kilowatt hours, mirrors makes no difference, out of it. The Rivian, very similar, 130 kilowatt hours usable, right about there. And we pulled about 125 kilowatt hours out of it. So, very similar battery packs. Now, range is a different story. Um, with the F-150 Lightning, you may have seen Kyle's range test on that, where he did about 260 miles, which is pretty solid. And the Rivian, 290 miles. Now, that was with different wheels and tires. Those are the 20-inch wheels with the bigger, more off-road tires. So, we'll see how this compares to that. But this is, again, on 22s, and this is on 22s. So, I am, yeah, genuinely curious. I think the Rivian's going to win. I'm going to drive it, so I'm going to hope it wins. But <laughs> we don't know. So Jordan, the Rivian just completed at 70%. You're still at 58, but uh, how did you set your limit? This charge is a bit slower, but yeah, you go in. Well, we started with less than. <laughs> <laughs> you go into the truck symbol, head over to settings, and then charging is, yeah, the not quite the top option, but yeah, you go to charging, and there's a one-time max charge limit that you can set every time you start the truck. You can do it in 1% increments. All the way down from really low, right? What's the lowest? Yeah, zero. zero. <laughs> <laughs> you could do that to your buddies. Yep. If you got a buddy with an F-150 Lightning, that's how you screw with them. So I'm trying to get 70. You can use the arrows. There, there go. you go. Save, Save setting, and that will stop it at 70. So we're actually giving the Rivian, and we're talking you know, maybe a less than 10 watt hour difference, but we're, <laughs> we're giving the Rivian a slight advantage because it's unplugged sitting right there and we're leaving once this is done. So I think you and I both think that this is probably the less efficient truck. We're going to find out by how much, yep. um, but we actually aren't doing the Rivian any favors by having it complete maybe 10 minutes a little bit early. Yeah. <laughs> you join me back at the office with these incredible views to thank Magna. Now, Magna is a technology company that produces not only parts for cars, but also technological solutions from manufacturing and design and engineering. They cover so many parts of the automotive sector, 
and I bet you've interacted with a Magna product in your life before. Magna actually is very near and dear to my heart because their partnership Magna Steyr in Austria produced my first car, a Mini Countryman, and uh, it was built right there in Graz. A lot of you are also familiar, Magna's gonna be producing the Fisker Ocean in their Magna Steyr factory, and they also build G-Wagons and nothing gets tougher than a G. So really excited about our partnership with Magna, of course. They are also hiring for engineers. So we know a lot of you guys are super interested in technology and auto Automotive. I'll leave a link below so you can learn more about possible opportunities at Magna. But of course, we want to thank them for sponsoring today's video and being such a huge supporter of Out of Spec. Truly, they are pushing mobility forwards responsibly and sustainably. And here we are, the lightning has hit 70% state of charge and it's just about to cut off. The idea here is if this cuts off at a certain point and this cuts off at a certain point, when we start up charging again, they should in theory stop charging at the same point, assuming there will be a little bit of BMS sway. Again, it's real world testing. It's as close as anyone could reasonably get. So there we go, just stopped charging here. Uh, and so we will be charging back to the same charging cutoff on both trucks at the end and also referencing things. So you reset trip A, I'll reset trip A and uh, no cheating, you gotta run your climate control. <laughs> All right, climbing in the Rivian, got the trip reset, which you can do by hitting this truck and then this truck. And then you have trip A, trip B, so trip A, reset. You have to hit it twice sometimes to reset the actual total energy used. And as Kyle mentioned, I will have climate control set, turned on auto. And we always keep it between 68 and 72 on these tests. Uh, I think he mentioned aiming for 68 in that truck. So we'll do the same thing just to make sure it's the same. Um, yeah, just gonna run climate control. We're not even gonna charge our phones. I mean, this is like as scientific as possible. 70% state of charge it says that I have 210 miles remaining. We'll see if that's actually true, but we are heading out. So before we start this thing up, let's go to, I guess we got to start it up. Starting up, we're going to go to trip. Boom. Trip one. Reset. There we go. We're going to go auto 68. I'm going to go to the single fan here. We're gonna click this, driver focused. We just have headlights and auto, everything's the way it should be, into reverse. Let's do this test. Oh, we got, got some guys going behind us. So I'm gonna lead the way out of here on the first leg at 70 miles an hour GPS, and then we're gonna swap positions and Jordan's gonna lead us on the way back just to help with any sort of, um, you know, sort of aero advantage. Although we're gonna try and keep a pretty good distance between each truck. We want each truck to be pushing the same amount of wind. We're trying to do it as legit as possible. Ooh, that is a nice dually right there. 6.7 liter LEDs, hell yeah. Love those things. Battery pack temp is around 35 degrees C according to that chart, remember I showed you that? Anyway, Jordan is just coming out behind us and then we'll hit the road. Pulling away and there's Kyle in front of me in the lightning. This is gonna be a very interesting test. I mean, we've already established it's gonna be interesting. Everyone's asking for comparisons between these two trucks. And I, yeah, they're not exactly cross shop, but at the same time they are in a way because they're being cross shot by the people who are wanting to be the first in the electric pickup truck game. So it's almost like regardless of what, how capable the truck is or what it's made for. So, we're just gonna jump over on our loop here. Wow, this thing rides so nice. I'm in love with the Rivian. So during our range test, that's actually where we ran out of charge, pretty much where that Mercedes was, right over there. And um, yep, that was quite an entertaining time. <laughs> so let's pull out here. There's no efficient mode in the F-150 Lightning, just normal mode. The dual motors, two permanent magnet motors are always connected. Jordan is going to run in all-purpose mode uh, just to simulate both trucks sort of in their standard key-up settings, I think, which is the most uh, reasonable way and the way most people will drive them. The Rivian does have a special conserve mode that'll give it an even more advantage that actually disconnects the rear motors because they have four permanent magnet motors, so you don't have flux-related losses on those two motors. But again, I'm not so sure that's how most people will drive it so we're just running key up settings like EPA does their testing in all-purpose mode and seeing how they do 
merging onto the highway here. We're gonna get up to an indicated 69 miles an hour. Seven, eight, nine, lock it in, boom. There we are, cruising at 69 miles an hour. What a beautiful night, 74 degrees. Not a cloud in the sky, not a hint of wind. And it is just absolutely gorgeous out there. Could not ask for a better day and temperature to do some stuff. Oh, and my camera is, to, is blocking the blue cruise cameras. We'll fix that here momentarily, but we gotta get up to speed and we're just gonna be running 70. So interestingly enough, Waze confirms 73 indicated as 70 GPS. Kyle's truck is showing 70 miles an hour indicated and 70 GPS. So the Rivian is just a bit off and it could be the wheels and tires. Um, it's hard to tell, but I think the other Rivian we had also was running faster or indicated than it actually is which i guess is safer because that means when you think you're really speeding more you're actually not speeding as much i guess that's fine anyways we are running all purpose mode by the way because that's how most people would run their rivian yes it does have a conserve mode but kyle's truck does not and we're trying to make this as apples to apples as possible so the idea is getting your truck and go how efficient is it we're going to find out and a side rant, the Rivian and the Lightning both have, for some reason, decided not to show state of charge on the driver's display, which is kind of frustrating because that is, I don't, I think that's a more accurate readout and is good information. I think for most people, the guesso meter of the mileage is probably fairly accurate, but honestly, towing could really throw it off, which of course the truck will adjust for, but it's just, I think, really good to show actual state of charge. The Lightning, you can show it in the Calm screen, but the Rivian, nope, not at all. Just over 27 miles in, which means we are coming up to our turnaround here pretty soon. The sun is still setting. It's just a long, nice sunset. Reminds me of Texas, uh, <laughs> because most of the taller mountains are a little bit to the south. And look at those trees, that's such a cool silhouette effect. Um, yeah, just thoroughly enjoying my time at the R1T. Uh, we're not even playing music, not charging our phones, don't have heated or cooled seats. This is just get in and go efficiency testing. Love it here at Out of Spec, uh, that's what we do best. And just an absolutely perfect drive. I've seen Jordan just in the mirror at the perfect distance the whole time. We're just gonna be exiting over here into the right lane at exit 70. We're gonna kick it off at this stop sign and then Jordan and I are actually gonna, I guess, swap positions. Not that it really matters. There's enough distance where he hasn't been drafting at all. So this worked out perfectly. The drive up was wonderful. And wow, look at how full this parking lot is full of trucks. Never seen the loves that busy here. And here we are, just a little bit of regen on the way in. You guys know we have like sort of this double diverging intersection. You guys always tell me what it's called, but it means I can just kind of zig on through. So I'll just go a little bit slower, let Jordan catch up. We'll let him get in the lead and then I'll put some distance behind him. And uh, man, I'm just so thrilled with how well this test worked out and the conditions of today are just absolutely perfect. By the way, uh, what do you think of the trend of all these light bars on the back of EVs? I'm actually a huge fan, personally. Um, I've, you know, everyone's had it. moments where you're following a car, maybe from the distance, and you're like, is that a motorcycle? Is that an EV? Uh, who knows? So now I am going in front of Kyle. We are both speeding up to the same exact speed again. 70 miles an hour GPS accurate. He's got his front light bar on too. It's definitely a different light situation than the Rivian. Um, I love the Rivian's front fascia. The daytime running lights are stunning. We are back now at 73 indicated, which we have concluded is 70 miles an hour GPS. And we head back down to Wellington to do our charging back up to 70%. 70, 70. That's what we'll call this test, I guess. Jordan just squeezed ahead on the on-ramp. I pulled over for him to go by. We're gonna leave quite a bit of distance like we did just last time, accelerating back up to 70 miles an hour. We kinda need to be there now, so come on F-150, let's hit resume. 67, 68, 69, boom, locked in, and uh, cruising on the way back to Wellington, Colorado. Just checked in with Kyle. To avoid spoilers, it's going to be interesting. 
Um, but yeah, it's funny. So his cruise control says 69 and it's GPS verified at 70. So our trucks have a four mile an hour disparity, which we equated to, <laughs> we can put a man on the moon, but we still can't get speed exactly right. Same with cell service, actually. It's amazing how many spots of no cell service I have, even in metropolitan areas. Ride's really nice on these 22s, by the way. Really a big fan. Um, yeah, just, just so happy. I love this truck. Just got an update from Jordan up there. He's having to run 73 miles an hour indicated. Sorry, every time I hold the phone up, I can't see my eyes. Um, He's having to run 73 miles an hour indicated and I'm running 69 miles an hour. It's like, we can put a man on the moon, but we have no idea how fast we're going. This is ridiculous. Why Why can't speedometers just be calibrated when they leave the factory? Who knows? Both of the trucks are wrong in different ways with the same wheel size. Makes no sense to me. Crazy. Anyway, uh, uh, definitely we are locked in at the same speed though. That distance from me to, me to him has been dead on accurate it not it is not changing so this is going to be one hell of an accurate test in my opinion and we are ending the test coming up on our exit here in wellington colorado i think i'm going to take it off 70 miles an hour right where jordan hit the brakes right about here and then we'll regen on the way in and uh, blue crew is not available that makes sense because we are pulling off the highway so let's uh let's see what uh, the results are on both trucks when we get over there but that was honestly we could not have asked for a better test, better conditions, a better procedure in the real world. That was like really freaking sweet. And uh, I have no idea what to expect here. I would be really shocked if they are really close, but I, I don't know. This is so much bigger than that truck. Heading towards the charger. No one's at the charger. This is not a very busy charger, by the way. It's just uh, kind of out here by itself. Some charge point chargers, but not very high speed, unfortunately. So. We won't be able to charge up that super fast. And pulling in now to the fueling station. Um, interesting, two older generation Audi A6s. That's pretty cool. So let's see, there goes the Rivian ripping around and yeah, no idea what to expect here. They're all looking at the Rivian though. They're like, whoa. The thing is they don't even probably realize that this is electric, the lightning. Oh, they just realized they started pointing. <laughs> oh, he's taking my charger. Uh oh. And I'll go to this one over here. And, whoa, CCS handle on the ground. We did not leave it like that. What is going on there? Huh, someone must have vandalized it. Let's not run it over. Into park, 1.9 miles per kilowatt hour, kilowatt hour indicated 56.7 miles and 53 minutes. Let's take a look at the results compared to Jordan. Pulling it up here, we arrived with exactly 50%. So we used exactly 20% and back to the trip. 57.9 miles is what it indicates, 2.15 miles per kilowatt hour. That's pretty fantastic. Says it used 27 kilowatt hours. All right, Kyle, what'd you get in the big bulky F-150? Well, it shows 1.9 miles per kilowatt hour, but also less miles traveled than we did. And the reason is I had to drive at 69 miles an hour. Occasionally we find that the speedometer indicated is off, but the mileage tracking is correct. Here, it just seems like the F-150 is, is totally off base. What about you? Yeah, well, mine went the other way. Mine, because it was indicated 73, my truck thinks it did 57.9 miles. So that's a 1.2 mile disparity between us, right? What was your efficiency number? 2.15 miles per kilowatt hour. And what's hard to know is where is it pulling these numbers from? So that's <laughs> why we have to include a charging component in this test. Right, so they're pretty close. Yeah. Pretty close. Yours is probably reading a bit more efficient than you did. Yeah. And mine's actually probably reading a bit less efficient than it did. Does yours... So we're gonna be very, very close actually, more than I would expect. Does yours read out the kilowatt hours used? Or I guess we could do some math. No. Mine, mine claims 27, I'll be curious. Okay. What mine, state of charge mine. did you arrive with? Let's take a look. I don't actually know offhand. Because the truck doesn't really tell you on either of these trucks very easily. Yeah, I, you gotta go into menus on both of these trucks <laughs> to see. And this one's like two menus deep. You have to hit truck, control, charge, 48%. All right, mine's 50. Okay, interesting. Yeah. So that, that's, a, that's an interesting metric because this should still have more usable capacity than that truck. Very interesting. So I think this definitely was thirstier. Yeah. 
but let's confirm it by charging. Now the big question is which is gonna charge more efficiently? That's a little bit higher voltage. Yeah. But they're still gonna get the same amount of current from the charger, so the heat loss should be the same since they should both deliver 200 amps to the trucks yep. and deliver 200 amps flat all the way to the point where we have the charge limits. So we're trying our best to make this as legit. And I think we're gonna go off the charging delivered numbers, but so far it looks like the Rivian was more efficient off of these numbers, Yeah. but not by as much as you would think. So let's do a little stopwatch timing charge race, first of all, just for fun. Yeah. Because I wanna show you one benefit of the Rivian, higher voltage for the same amount of current means you should charge faster than me getting to 70% state charge. Even though I got 2% less than you, and a little bit more usable, so I gotta add more energy, that's gonna finish significantly quicker than this truck. The big question is by how much, because now we're actually getting into which is the faster road tripper when we have this conversation. So we're answering a lot of questions here. Let's get them plugged in. <laughs> See what happens. All right, plugging in the Rivian. My charge port is a little bit closer than Kyle's. That's a nicer charge port location. It's very nice. So it took a second to get your Rivian charging, but that's, I don't know, it doesn't, doesn't actually really matter. So the, the F-150 is ahead, that's not really the point here. I wanted to show you, this is doing 73.3 kilowatts delivered to the truck. For the same amount of current with a higher pack voltage in the Rivian, it's doing 83 kilowatts. And that is the same current, 200 amps, just there's the benefit of higher pack voltage. So automakers, if you're not gonna go 800 volt technology, which I understand why, because you gotta engineer components and integrate things and have onboard boosters, unless you're like Ionic 5 and use the inverter, it's more cost, more complexity, and really not much benefit other than really charging. I still think the sweet spot is a high 400 volt system architecture like the Rivian. Yep. It just seems to be seems to be the better move than going with something such low voltage like this or Mach-E. Also, is this part of the light burnt out? I don't think so. I don't know. It looked a little bit uh, looked a little bit dim here. It's off right now. Oh, it is a little dim right there. It is a little dim right there, isn't it? What is this? An early Tesla Model S? <laughs> <laughs> you see him driving around with like one headlight out all the time now. <laughs> so after literally 25 minutes on the nose, this stopped charging. Uh, I will say the Rivian's running not AC compressor, but a bit more fan just recently than this was. Uh, in the warm weather, the lightning has just been ripping the fans at DC fast chargers. It only kicked on for a little bit. And that's why this is not the most scientific way to measure efficiency. We can't get accurate speedometers out of the cars and we can't get accurate charging data because of thermal management, which means we really need to get some clamps on the battery packs coming at some point in the future. It's as good as we can get it. Um, so if the Rivian still proves to be more efficient after its charging uh, session, then that would be interesting. So we delivered 30.164 kilowatt hours to the truck and it claims 26 minutes and 23 seconds. Not true. It was 25 minutes. Every measurement is off today. Every <laughs> measurement is off today, but I let's just hope that 30 kilowatt hours is whatever that same measurement uses over there. <laughs> and then what we can do is we can take that 30 kilowatt hours and divide it by our route, but there's charging losses. So it's not even that accurate. It's mind blowing. Jordan, the chargers reached seventy percent. It hasn't yet completed. Oh, just there. Nice. Oh, 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 so what's the time? Twenty and tw I took two seconds. So okay, 20, so it's 25. pretty much five minutes faster to charge up the Rivian on the same power output, same current output charger. Yep. There's the benefit of higher voltage. Also, I think slightly better efficiency. Yep. Also, how many kilowatt hours were delivered? Twenty-eight point seven. And I would say that's with more thermal management going on here. Yeah. So more charging loss from my perspective. Yeah. So Rivian is more efficient by the numbers, even if we try and correct for speed difference. It's more efficient in the charging, uh, cooperates that, and is overall a slightly more efficient truck. However, the Lightning did really well. It did. Uh, it's closer, not... Yeah, go ahead. Closer than I expected, honestly. Yeah, way closer than I expected. This is a significantly larger vehicle, much bigger aero footprint, just, you know, in every dimension, significantly larger. This looks like a little baby in comparison, right? This has more cargo room, everything like that. So for this to be in the same range of efficiency as the Rivian, I would say maybe 
you know, if this is like 2.1 miles per kilowatt hour and this is closer to 1.9 or, or two, I mean, they're with, they're right in there. 0 0.1, 0 0.2 miles per kilowatt hour difference at 70. That speaks volumes to the efficiency going on here with this F-150. What do you say all the time? Nearest makes no difference. Nearest makes no difference. I think this is <laughs> maybe not that close. <laughs> I think it does make a difference. Yeah. But we've seen this from Mach-E as well. That is a great vehicle on long distance and, and single charge range. And for what this truck can do, my impression is still really good. But the Rivian, of course, did do a little bit better. So no surprise there, given the size. Yeah, I would take the Rivian on a road trip, but this is- This nice works too. Yeah. So in conclusion of our test, the actual numbers when we're comparing these things are always very difficult in the real world. I think I've made that clear. What we can extrapolate is, of course, the Rivian is slightly more efficient, but I'm actually really impressed with the F-150 considering the size of it and uh, being the Platinum, having all the equipment. Of course, this has all the equipment. I love that we were able to do the test both on the big wheel options. Uh, maybe one day we can do this same test both on the aero wheel options. Um, and this is just the start of the comparisons between the two. We are gonna be doing towing, hauling, road tripping. It's all coming up. So stay tuned to this channel, Out of Spec Reviews and Out of Spec Motoring for all the Rivian versus F-150 Lightning content you could ever dream of. We'll see you on the next video.